Okay, we're going to uh, perform a, a mock uh, baptism uh, in order to uh, give you some information about baptism itself. So this is a, a typical uh, baptistry. Most churches that have a baptistry, uh, the baptistry looks like this. There's about three, three and a half feet of uh, standing water. Two um, entranceways into the baptistry, which serve as uh, uh, dressing rooms in the back, where the individual being baptized has a, a kind of a private spot where they can uh, change and, and get ready, and then the other room where the minister or whoever is performing the baptism can also do the same. Uh, a couple of recommendations if you're putting in a baptistry or if you already have one, good idea that there is an ongoing filter to continually clean the water because after all it's just a miniature swimming pool and that water needs to be uh, cleaned um, continually and also a heating element to, to make sure that the water is uh, warm. I always uh, tell uh, the brethren make sure the baptistry water is clean and warm and ready so you, you don't have to spend hours filling up a baptistry and, and warming the water when somebody decides that they wish to be baptized. Uh, you can uh, go immediately to the baptistry and perform that baptistry. A couple of things about our own baptistry here at the Choctaw Congregation. We have a built-in microphone pointing into the uh, baptistry uh, itself uh, that is able to pick up the uh, conversation or the words that uh, the individual says when they confess their faith and if uh, they're doing a prayer or whatever. Individuals who are uh, observing that in the congregation, perhaps you know, sitting in the pews, are able to hear clearly what the individual is saying, what the, you know, the exchange going on, so on and so forth. Uh, also, this is a safety feature. We have heard and read many times, unfortunately, that people tried to go into the baptistry with a microphone on them, not realizing that that microphone is plugged into something which is electric and there's a danger of uh, electrocu uh, electrocution. Okay, one other thing I want to show you before we uh, actually do the baptism, so you'll need to come with me, we're going to go into the changing room. Here we are in the uh, baptistry changing room. Um, I've been in a lot of these uh, type of rooms and I can say that it's important uh, that you provide the things uh, needed by the individual who is uh, going to be baptized. Uh, the first thing you might notice is there's a sign on the door here and it says baptistry changing room and in brackets no storage. <laughs> One of the temptations in a lot of churches is to use this room which stays empty most of the time um, uh, to begin using it as storage and uh, I've been in uh, churches and gone into their uh, baptistry changing room where they were storing chairs and wedding uh, paraphernalia and uh, all kinds of you know uh, extra boxes of lighting because they felt well this is only used once in a while and uh, we can use it as storage but you need to remember that the individual who's being baptized this is one of the most important days and moments of their life and so when they walk into the baptistry changing room and see that it's being used as a storage area uh, that doesn't uh, speak well of what we uh, think uh, the meaning of baptism uh, is. So in our uh, changing room we try to make it clean and neat. We provide the things that uh, an individual who's going to be immersed in water may need. You know, a hair dryer, certainly a mirror to comb and to uh, uh, finish drying uh, their hair. Uh, chairs, because many times, uh, especially ladies, um, uh, they usually have someone come in with them to help them change and, and do other things. And so there needs to be a place for them to, uh, to sit. Kleenex, because there's uh, crying that goes on many times. Uh, the, the, the joy of the moment overtakes uh, the individual. And then of course, um, in this particular room, making sure that we have clothing that uh, an individual can uh, use in order to uh, be baptized. Plenty of towels, uh, you know, the individual can use. Um, a, a small thing, but a handy thing, is a, um, uh, a hamper uh, in order to put uh, wet towels and wet baptistry clothing into until such time these things can be taken care of. I, I suggest that uh, there's an additional clo closet or private changing place. Uh, many times, uh, especially for women, uh, two or three women come in to help that individual, to support that individual, but maybe that individual would like to have some privacy as she changes into the garments 
that she will use uh, for the baptistry. So a good thing to remember, make sure the baptistry changing room is clean and it has all the things that the individual might need for that most important moment. Okay, we're going to go on and into the baptistry now to uh, give a demonstration of a, an immersion. We're in the baptistry uh, with uh, Mike here is, uh, of course, has been baptized uh, many, many years ago, but he's uh, kindly allowed us to do this uh, practice baptism with using him. Uh, a couple of things to remember. Um, of course, if we're talking about baptism, the word baptism means to immerse in water. So if someone is baptized, it means they're immersed in the water. Uh, a couple of things to remember when you uh, baptize someone. Um, if you're going to baptize, you, you can baptize them a variety of ways. A person could, could go straight down into the water one way. Uh, in the first century, uh, for a long time, they went face first into the water. Uh, what uh, we do nowadays is actually lean the person back uh, to go, you know, to be buried uh, under water in order to, um, uh, to reenact uh, what is written in uh, Romans chapter 6. Uh, that baptism is a, a burial. So in a burial, we don't think of somebody, you know, kind of stooping down in, in, into the grave or going forward into the grave. Uh, in, in, uh, in a burial, we're thinking of a person being laid to rest in a grave. And that's what we're mimicking in a, uh, in a baptism. So I'm going to ask Mike to turn around this way. And uh, um, when we baptize someone, there's a variety of ways. Sometimes before people get in the water, uh, we ask them to make their confession of faith. You know, that, uh, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? And they say, yes, I do. Um, sometimes uh, we do it in, uh, while we're in the baptistry. So for now, I'll do it in the baptistry. I'll ask Mike, just to work our way through it. Uh, Michael, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, that's fine. Now, uh, one of the things we do to make sure not to have any injuries Measure how, you know, how tall the person is so that when you bring them down, they don't hit their head on the steps or anything. So usually I move them forward to make sure that I have a lot of clearance for them to go backwards. That's one thing. And the second thing is I ask them to kind of hold their nose because if you go backwards into the water, it'll be normal that the water will rush into your nose. So we tell people to kind of hold their nose so the water doesn't rush in and then clasp their hand like that so you have all of their arms and hands You've got all of them with one arm supporting their back in this way and your other hand in the front supporting them in the front. And when you're going to pull them back up, you, they'll help you pull them you know, back up using both of your hands uh, as you grip with your right hand, both of their hand and their wrist. Another thing that I do is I ask the person to bend their knees slightly so that they don't have to go straight back. It, it puts less pressure on the back. So then make sure you're supporting them with your left hand so that they don't fall and you go down and up. Uh, one thing to remember, uh, baptism is a burial. So when you go down, go down, go all the way down. One of the good things about holding them like this is you, you assure yourself that the person is completely immersed. You don't want them to have their hands, you know, sticking up in the air as they go out. So but with this way, you're making sure that the entire body is going to be immersed. All right, that's immersion baptism.